This week at Starbase, SpaceX takes a break from testing ahead of Flight 6 and construction is pushing forward at full steam. At the launch site, teams are installing new subcoolers and reworking the plumbing needed for the second launch tower. At the build site, crews are hard at work on ships, boosters, and expanding production capacity of Mega Bay 2 while the newest launch mount comes together at Sanchez and construction progresses on the office building. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, in the early hours of Friday morning, Ship 34's aft liquid oxygen tank was rolled out of Star Factory and into Mega Bay 2 for stacking. Later that morning, trucks loaded with crane mats and counterweights began rolling out of the launch site's D2 gate as the Sarin's CC8800 crane began the lengthy process of leaving Starbase. Meanwhile, up the road at the Sanchez site, the third corner of the second level of prefabricated steel for the new launch mount was briefly lifted by the crane before being lowered back down. That afternoon, crews began repositioning Ship 33 at the Massey outpost. With the first Block 2 Starship having now completed its initial round of cryogenic proof testing, its return to the build site was next on the agenda. Early that evening, the next corner of the new launch mount was once again lifted by the crane. This time, the piece was maneuvered into its final position on top of the base and lowered into place. Overnight and into Saturday morning, Ship 33 was rolled out of the Massey outpost and onto Highway 4. The Starship was then returned to the build site and brought straight into Mega Bay 2. Once there, one of the Block 2 ship lifters was picked up by one of the bridge cranes and hooked up to the rocket. Notably, the lifting jig was attached to Ship 33 without requiring crews in lifts to assist with the actual connection. Shortly after 5 on Saturday morning, Ship 33 was lifted off the proofing stand and transferred onto one of the Mega Bay 2 work stands. Next up for the Flight 7 second stage should be engine installation. With the ship now removed from it, the proofing stand was rolled out of the bay and parked nearby. The ship lifter stand was then brought into the building. A few hours later, Ship 33 was secured to the work stand and the lifting jig detached and moved over to its awaiting stand. Later that morning, first the Block 2 ship lifter and then later the ship proofing stand were moved out of the ring yard area and taken back to the Sanchez site for storage until they are needed again. That evening, SPMTs and trucks were seen moving what looked to be containers and other various articles from the SPMT storage lot near the payload processing building. The items were brought in the build site's main gate and taken between High Bay and Mega Bay 1, presumably heading down to the Sanchez site. Could SpaceX have new plans for the lot next to the payload building? Let us know what you think in the comments below. The next morning, the work continued as an SPMT loaded with counterweights and a spare power pack passed through the build site and turned between High Bay and Mega Bay. Down at the launch complex, the main superstructure section of the Sarin's crane was lifted off the base as disassembly of the tower building crane continued. On Monday morning, another side section of the second level of the new orbital launch mount arrived at Starbase. The heavy-duty steel structure was taken to the build site area at the Sanchez site. Early that afternoon, a concrete pump truck unfurled its boom and got right to work placing fresh concrete in the new suspected commodities trench at the back of the launch site. Meanwhile, trucks continued to roll out of the launch complex carrying components of the Sarin's crane. By mid-afternoon, the concrete pour was wrapping up. With its hard work done, the pump truck packed up its boom and headed out. Later, up the road at the build site, an SPMT was spotted moving some new hardware into the Star Factory building. This white steel structure was likely constructed at the Sanchez site, like much of the other rocket building assemblies we've seen go into Star Factory. That evening, some of the new access platforms that arrived in recent weeks were brought into Mega Bay 2 for installation. These platforms have several folding sections that can be lowered once a ship has been placed onto the work stand, allowing workers closer access to the vehicles. 
Once the platform lifts were done, Ship 34's methane transfer tube was spotted being positioned for a lift inside the building. One of the bridge cranes then lowered its hook, picked up the tube, and moved it towards the stacking station on the right side of the building. Around that same time, an SPMT moved several multi-level work platforms across the ring yard area and into the Star Factory building. A few hours later, another pair of work platforms were brought over to Mega Bay 2, where they were then lifted and installed. Around that same time, a concrete pump truck once again unfurled its boom at Starbase. This time, the concrete was being placed at the under construction connector between the new office building and the Star Factory building. After a few hours of work, the pour was finished and the truck headed out. Throughout the day on Tuesday, trucks loaded with the pieces and components of the Sarens crane continued their parade out of Starbase as disassembly of the tower building crane pushed onward. The Biggie branded crane that was used for the piling work around the new launch and catch tower also left the site, indicating that the piling work is likely done for now. Around noon, a telehandler arrived at the launch site carrying several curved pieces of steel. Later, the pieces were assembled into a ring and were brought towards the front of the tank farm. This ring might be an embed plate for a new vertical tank. Later, a crane was seen removing a section of pipe work from the tank farm as SpaceX continues to upgrade the farm in preparation for it supplying both launch pads. At the back of the site, an excavator could be seen moving things around near the new commodities trench between the farm and the under construction launch pad. That evening, the final corner of the second level of the new orbital launch mount was lifted and installed as the moon set behind it. Wednesday morning, a four-ring booster section rolled out of Star Factory and into the ring yard. While it sat there, a booster load spreader was brought out from between the Mega Bays and into Mega Bay 1. And just a half hour later, the ring section, which is the fourth section of Booster 16's liquid oxygen tank, rolled across the ring yard and into the booster bay for stacking. Around that same time, just a short trip up Highway 4, a concrete pump truck arrived and got right to work on the office Star Factory connector for the second consecutive morning. This time, the pour appeared to last about five hours before the truck packed up and left. Later that morning, over in the scrap yard at the Sanchez site, a crane could be seen lifting off the top half of the white Starlink loader box as crews worked to scrap the apparently obsolete prototype. Down at the launch complex, a crane removed the protective steel shell from around the large transformer at the end of the electrical bunker. This is presumably to allow temporary increased access to the equipment for some kind of work before the next launch. Back at the build site, additional access platforms were delivered to the ring yard area as SpaceX works to fit out the building, allowing for more vehicles to be worked on concurrently. Throughout the day, we once again saw a steady stream of trucks leaving the launch complex with crane components as the Saren's crew continues with their lengthy process of disassembly and shipping out of the large CC-8800 crane. A truck was spotted pulling into the D2 gate at the launch site with a pair of very large diameter pipes. These pipes were taken to the back of the site and offloaded near the new commodities trench. Late that morning, the two recently delivered work platforms were driven between the Mega Bays to the offloading area between Mega Bay 2 and the Rocket Garden, where crews have been preparing these platforms for installation. By early afternoon, the Black Buckner LTR 1220 crane was offloading both platforms. Back at the pad, another concrete pump truck unfurled its boom once again and got to work in the area of the new commodities trench. This pour wrapped up pretty quickly, with the truck packing up just a bit over an hour later. Later that afternoon, a Raptor transport cart was moved out of Star Factory and presumably made its way back to the Raptor's nest on the backside of Mega Bay 1. Back at the launch complex, a large section of prefabricated cryopiping was delivered along with the pipe stands and driven in the direction of Pad A. At the Star Factory office connector, crews continue to install the glass on the building's facade. The panels in this section are angling upwards towards the roof, similar to the opposite end of the factory and also providing a cleaner transition to all the glass face of the office. 
That night, crews began installing white panels above the windows on the connector. Presumably, these are just an initial insulation layer and will eventually be covered with the black panels to match the rest of the building. Early on Thursday, one of the four side sections for the second level of the new orbital launch mount was lifted and moved into the proper position on the base level. Over the next few hours, the section was secured in place and the crane disconnected. For the third straight morning, a concrete pump truck set to work on the Star Factory office connector. This time, however, after about three hours, the truck folded up its boom to leave. Meanwhile, a large truckload of scaffolding rolled in through the ring yard gate and headed back between the mega bays. Back over at the Star Factory office connector, rover camera caught workers installing yet another pane of glass on the building's facade. As the camera panned back over the ring yard, it caught the black telescopic crane heading into Mega Bay 2 with another of the access platforms for installation. About an hour after that, the crane was back again with the day's second platform. Over in the rocket garden, a crane was spotted loading counterweights onto SPMTs that had picked up one of the booster transport stands. This indicated that Booster 13 would soon be returning to the pad as SpaceX prepares for the next launch. Down at the launch site, the second of the new subcoolers was moved over, then lifted and installed onto the base of the near side of the orbital tank farm. That afternoon, a long carbon dioxide tank was moved from Star Factory over to Mega Bay 1. These oversized COPVs are installed under the chines on super heavies and are used to purge the engine bays of volatile gases. Back at the build site, a low boy trailer was backed into Star Factory through the building's side facing ring yard door. A little while later, the second of the side sections for the current level of the new launch mount was lifted and installed. With this latest lift, six of the eight main pieces for this layer were in position. A little over four hours after the low boy disappeared inside of Star Factory, the truck emerged loaded with a mysterious piece of hardware. What do you think is hiding under the tarp? Could it be a new booster landing tank bound for testing at McGregor? Knock yourself out in the comments and let us know what you think below. That night, as crews continue to push forward with preparations for Flight 6, a panel was lifted to the area around the booster quick disconnect on the launch mount at Pad A. At the build site, yet another clear sign of the rapidly approaching 6th integrated flight test was spotted as Booster 13's hot stage adapter emerged from Star Factory for the first time. Over at the Sanchez site, night work continued and for the second time this week a section of the new launch mount was lifted and moved into position as the moon set behind Starbase. A truck carrying a vacuum raptor transport box was spotted turning around in the ring yard gate before heading up Highway 4 out of Starbase, likely empty after delivering another engine. As midnight approached, the hot stage adapter was moved across the ring yard and parked in the staging area outside of Mega Bay 1 to await installation atop Booster 13. Switching over to Florida around noon on Friday, Doug returned to Port Canaveral carrying both of the recovery fairing halves from the Starlink Group 10-13 mission. And about an hour later, Just Read the Instructions was towed out to sea in support of the next Starlink launch. That evening, Bob followed the drone ship out of the port in support of that same mission. Early the next afternoon, a short follow Gravitas was towed to the Port Canaveral docks with Booster 1078 following its 14th successful mission. Just two hours later, the Falcon 9 first stage was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for processing. On Sunday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 rolled out to a historic launch complex 39A with cargo Dragon Capsule C-208 in preparation for the CRS-31 mission. This mission notably includes the first ever reboost of the space station by SpaceX as they prepare for its eventual deorbit with a modified Dragon after it's decommissioned in 2030. That evening, the Blue Origin support ship Harvey Stone returned to port with a Jacklin landing barge following a brief stay at the shipyard in Jacksonville. 
On Monday night, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lit up the Florida skies as it blasted off from Launch Complex 39A for the CRS-31 mission, sending the Dragon capsule and its cargo to orbit for its eventual rendezvous with the International Space Station. By Thursday morning, dockside processing had been completed for Booster 1078 and the rocket was transferred to an awaiting transporter for its return to SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities. That afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1085 launched its third mission as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, sending another 23 Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.